Hi, boys and girls. Today's book is called Rabbits and Hares. It's by Diane Swanson. World of Difference. It's hard to tell rabbits from hares. Unless you happen to spot their newborns, rabbits start life without any fur, while hares arrive in fluffy coats. As adults, hares, which include jackrabbits, are usually larger than rabbits. Hares also have longer back legs and feet. In fact, the snowshoe hare was named for its big back feet. Like real snowshoes, they're long and wide, making it easy to move across snow. In winter, extra hair grows on their feet, which also helps keep the snowshoe hair from sinking. People sometimes confuse rabbits and hares with rodents, such as mice, rats, porcupines, and beavers. All these animals have long, sharp front teeth built for gnawing, but rabbits and hares have an extra pair that grow behind the front teeth in their upper jaw. Rabbits and hares are well known for having tall ears and short tails, but they don't all have them. For instance, volcano rabbits have short ears with no tails. Worldwide, there are more than 40 different kinds of rabbits and hares. About 20 kinds live in North America, including the European hare, and European rabbit that people moved from their original homes. The smallest rabbit or hare is the pygmy rabbit which weighs only as much as a grapefruit. The biggest, the European and Arctic hares, can weigh 16 times more. Many countries tell stories about a hare's short tail. Here's one from Ireland. Long ago an old man asked a long-tailed hare for directions through the woods. Follow me, said the hare. I'll show you the way. As the man hurried along, he tripped and fell onto a pit. Grab onto my long tail, said the hare, and then it pulled hard. The old man leaped out of the pit, but the hare's long tail snapped off, leaving just a stump. Where in the world? You can find rabbits and hares almost any place. Some kinds live close to seashores others on hillsides and tall mountains. Some, male, some make their home in city parks and gardens and others live in windswept Arctic. From dry deserts to soggy swamps and from grasslands to forest, rabbits and hares are nearly everywhere. Hares usually live in open spaces. They rest in forms, which are shallow holes that they dig in the soil. Sometimes they hide out in hollow logs or in little tunnels dug by other animals. North American rabbits often live in sheltered spaces such as woods. Can you see him? He's camouflaged. Such as woods. Like hares, most rabbits rest in forms, but European rabbits use burrows. They can make a large maze of burrow called a warren, which they might use for several generations. If the ground isn't suited for digging a lot of warrens, European rabbits might fight to keep others from taking over their homes. Pilots of low-flying planes can spot trails where many black-tailed jackrabbits live. These hares usually follow the same path to their fe favorite feeding places. They pack down the soil and plants as they go. Hares and rabbits are found throughout many countries, including Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Some kinds live in many places and others in very few. The volcano rabbit, for example, lives only in the mountain slopes in central Mexico. Warm up, cool down. Thick fur helps protect rabbits and hares from the cold, but fur isn't always enough. An icy weather arctic hare huddles close to the ground and tucks their ears and tails in. They might also tunnel into snowbanks. In hot deserts, black-tailed jackrabbits can't sweat to keep cool. They release body heat through blood vessels in their long, thin ears. On sizzling days, they might dig or enlarge a small burrow and then take shelter in its shade. World of food, any precious? <laughs> His ears are so long. Most rabbits and hares find food in the dark. Evenings and nights are safer times for them to be out. Through the summer, they graze on plants such as grass, clover, and bushes. They also eat garden vegetables in cities and on farms. In winter, when there's not as much food around, many rabbits and hares feed on dried plants, twigs, and bark. 
Snowshoe and Arctic hares even eat meat now and then. If they find the body of a dead animal, such as a fox, the big front teeth of rabbits and hares are strong and sharp enough to gnaw hard, hard food. They have tough coating to protect them, and they never stop growing. As rabbits and hares gnaw, they tuck flaps of skin behind their front teeth. That helps animals avoid swallowing any dirt or slivers. A split top lip allows them to stuff plenty of food into their mouths. It also makes their noses and wiggle when they eat. Many rabbits and hares feed alone, but some kinds, such as antelope rabbits, eat in small groups. All kinds gobble up their food fast, then they head for safe, quiet places. Rabbits and hares produce soft, moist pellets and partly of partly digested food. They eat these pellets the minute they come out of the animal's rear ends, then digest them all over again. That's how rabbits and hares get more nutrients out of their food. The waste their bodies can't use forms hard, dry pellets. Winter snows often bury arctic willows, short, bushy plants, that the arctic hare eats. It sniffs around until it smells the willows under the snow and then it digs down to reach them using their sharp curved claws on all four feet. If the snow is crusted with ice, the arctic hare might try to pound holes with its feet. If that doesn't work, it can gnaw through the crust with its front teeth. They stick out further than the front teeth of most hares. World of words. Thump, thump, thumpity thump. When they're afraid, rabbits and hares might stomp their back legs hard enough for others to feel the ground quiver. That's a warning. Something's definitely not right. Rabbits and hares that live near one another sometimes see warnings too. When European rabbits and black-tailed jackrabbits run from danger, the white fur of their tails sends a signal to others. Waste pellets can be used for another kind of talking. Some males use their own pellets to mark out territories. Then they search for mates inside the area. The smell of the pellets is a sign that tells other males to keep away. Male European rabbits sometimes stack up pellets to mark their burrows. They might also rub their burrows and some of the female rabbits with a special oil from their chins. The smell from that oil says mine, all mine. A rabbit or hare doesn't often use its voice, but if it's grabbed, it can make a high pitched squeal or shriek. The crying might encourage other predators to compete for the rabbit or hare. That can give the captured animal a chance to escape. Sometimes rabbits and hares use low growls and grunts and gruff grunts to say, go away. A soft clicking might mean I'm nervous. And as a mother is feeding her young, her gentle purring says, all's well. Here's to hares and rabbits. These furry critters are amazing. Here are a few reasons why. In burst, black tailed white and white tailed jackrabbits can race up to 45 miles an hour. The teeth of a cottontail rabbit can grow 10 centimeters or 4 inches in a year. Rabbits can produce a lot of heat. One man housed ha hundreds of them in a greenhouse to help warm his plants. <gasps> There's an arctic hare. Sniff, look, listen. Being able to sense danger in time to hide or escape can save lives of many rabbits and hares, so it's lucky for them that they smell, see, and hear as well as they do. Day and night, they put all these sharp senses to good use. The big bright eyes of rabbits and hares take in almost everything that's around them. Set on either side of their head, these eyes can see an enemy coming from any direction, even from behind. As soon as a rabbit or hare spots danger, it freezes. Not so much as a flicker from its watchful eyes gives its position away. Rabbits and hares are always twitching their noses and checking air, the air for smells. As they open their nostrils wide, they draw all the scent deep inside. Their noses have about 100 million sensors each, all working to pick up different scents. That's more than six times the number of smell sensors in your nose. Rabbits and hares have a keen sense of hearing, too. Without moving their heads at all, they can turn their ears to pick up sounds, and they catch faint and distant noises. To locate danger, jackrabbits seem to depend more on their hearing than they do on their sight. 
At the first hint of any danger, they stand tall, their tall ears straight up, and then they twist them this way and that until they discover the source of the sound. Hares can have a bad hair day, and so can rabbits, but they usually take very good care of their coats. They wash themselves by licking whatever tongue their tongues can reach. Then they wet their paws and use them to scrub other parts, such as their cheeks. Hares and rabbits might also treat themselves to dust baths. The dry soil helps prevent their fur from getting too oily. It also relieves itches caused by insects. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Dangerous world. Gray or brown coats help rabbits and hares hide. The animals blend in well with soil, rocks, and dry grass. In late fall, some grow thick white coats that match the color of snow and ice. Many predators hunt for rabbits and hares, including lynx, foxes, weasels, wolverines, hawks, owls, eagles, and snakes. When chased, European rabbits might duck inside a warren. They have more than one opening for popping in and out. Rabbits and hares often try to outrace danger. They bound away, springing off their back legs and feet. Their lightweight bodies help make jumping easy. But rabbits and hares have different running styles. In a single leap, a racing snowshoe hare can cover a distance the length of two beds placed end to end. A black-tailed jackrabbit may jump especially high every four or five leaps so it can take a good look around. Some rabbits and hares confuse their predators by hopping from side to side and circling around as they race. They usually try to avoid water, but they can swim if they have to. The slower-moving marsh rabbit seems almost comfortable in water. It can float un with only its eyes and nose poking out. If it's caught, a rabbit or hare might pretend to be dead. Predators don't always eat their catch right away, which can give their prey a chance to escape. Game over. A European hare is grazing in a field. Less than 150 feet away steps a fox. The hare looks straight at the fox and rises up on its back legs. It makes itself easy to see, but why? A fox rarely chases its food. It tries to creep close and then hides until the prey comes near. If a hare stands tall, the fox knows it's been spotted, and there's no point in trying to catch the speedy hare, so the fox usually looks for different prey. Oh, look at the babies. A new world. Most rabbits and hares have big families. Some females have up to 12 young at once, and they might give birth three or four times a year. Rabbits are born in nests that their mothers make. A European rabbit uses grass to line a special nesting chamber inside her burrow. Most other rabbits in North America dig shallow holes among tall grass or bushes. They line these holes with leaves, grass, moss, and soft fur, which they pull from their own bodies. Newborn rabbits are helpless. They have no fur and their eyes are shut tight. Before the mother leaves the nest to eat, she covers her young with a layer of nest lining. It hides them and helps keep them warm. When the mother returns, she feeds them her rich milk. The rabbits grow fast and move out of the nest after about three weeks. Young hares are lively right from birth. They have furry coats to keep them warm and their eyes are wide open. With, within a few hours, they're able to hop around. Like most North American rabbits, hares are born above ground. Arctic hares must wait until the snow melts to make a simple nest on the ground and often in moss. Mother hares usually visit their young only once a day to feed them milk. In three to four weeks, the hares are ready to leave their mothers and, if they must, to race away from predators. Hopping right to it. At birth, cottontail rabbits may be no longer than your thumb, but they grow fast. They can double their size and triple their weight in just two weeks. Then they start crawling out of their nest and hopping around. Sometimes they play by jumping right over one another. As they start to graze grasses, young cottontails move farther from home. But if the mother senses danger and stamps her feet, they freeze and run for cover. The end. That's a wonderful book. Full of information on rabbits and hares.